Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Living Waters Community Church. We're so glad you guys are here. Um, my name is Darren. I'm one of the deacons here. I was born in Columbia, South America. Just a little story by myself. Um, the Lord brought me here to this church. I, we were praying about it, and the Lord led my wife to here in this church, and and uh, well, God led us both to here to the church, which is pretty awesome. But uh, never underestimate the power of prayer and the power of um, God answering your prayer. It's pretty amazing how He answers your prayer. Um, and sometimes you'll answer it a year later, and which is pretty amazing, and he answered in his time frame. I'm, I'm not sure if I told everybody this one about uh, uh, Chad, but um, I was in a group with uh, one Chad, and I was trying to help my, my brother through the time he needed me there. So I would take uh, vacation time for him for cer certain days that he needed me to be there for him. So we traveled out of town to that specific place, and then... Um, I kept uh, witnessing to him, telling about Jesus and everything, and everything, and, and I, I know that the Lord wanted me to do that because somebody did that to me when I was lost, and God wanted me to know about Him personally, about His Son Jesus, uh, Son Jesus Christ, uh, who is my personal Lord and Savior, and I'm so thankful. But what was amazing about this day is um, when, we, when I was coming to um, a certain meeting, I was praying, and He had said to come and pick Him up that night, so. I was getting ready to pick him up that night, and I was praying when I was getting there and saying, okay, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to pick up Chad, okay? So when I was getting ready to pick up Chad, and I got there, and I knocked and knocked, and I even texted him that day, and he never answered or responded to me. And then when I got there, he never opened the door, so I was kind of a little bit um, upset with myself and upset just in the, in, the, in the thing. And I said, oh, man, Lord, there's no Chad there. <clears throat> so I get back to where I was supposed to be that night. And when I got there... Um, Two things happened. He, God answered my prayer, but I wasn't specifically as specific about the chat I wanted God for me to meet or to take. So chat, God brought a different chat in my life who a year before I had prayed to when I had crossed paths with him, when I had dro drove by uh, the church and he had a sign that says, Jesus loves you and Jesus forgives you. And, I, and at that time, I didn't have time to stop him or talk to him because I was uh, going to pick up my granddaughter or, or going to her, see her grandkids. Anyway, I said, God, I hope you give me an opportunity to meet this chat because I think it's awesome when someone has, and courageous when someone can hold a sign that says, Jesus loves you and Jesus forgives you because the world doesn't want people to know that truth and be set free. But anyway, that, to make uh, the story short, so uh, I came in and I met and at the whole time through, the, through the, the situation, it didn't happen. And then at that time, we had a little meeting and, and I didn't know that there was a chat in the, in the meeting. And the guy's like, hey, I'm Chad. And then as we kept talking and talking, they said, and I looked at him again. I said, oh, my gosh, are you that Chad that used to have a sign that says Jesus loves and Jesus forgives you? He said, yes. I said, oh, my gosh, that's amazing because God answered my prayer. Here it is a year and a half later, and boom, he answers my prayer. And I, I may have an opportunity to meet him. So I was thanking, I was thanking the Lord. So it's amazing how God answers your prayer. So never give up. Matthew 7, 7. I believe in Matthew 7, 7. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. And thank you for listening. Can we please stand? Father God in heaven, we just praise you and thank you, Lord God. Thank you for uh, allowing us to meet Jesus and allow us to be our personal Lord and Savior. If there may be somebody here that doesn't know them as their personal Lord and Savior, may this be the day of their salvation, Lord God. We just praise you and thank you for bringing us here together, Lord God. Um, we pray, we especially thank you for the guests and special guests and visitors, uh, Nathan and Zoe, Lord God. And thank you for bringing them here to this to your church, Lord God. We just praise you and thank you and give you honor and glory. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you will. Um, traditionally, we always have a family up here to do our Advent candle lighting. But this year, I decided to kick the door in on tradition. And we're going to have, I asked for a group of single people, for volunteers last week to do that. And I had a ton of people. So we're going to start this year off with our single people doing our first Advent candle lighting. Uh, this year. And the first one is going to be Miss Heather Cohen. Heather, would you come? Good morning. Good morning. Bear with me. I will be losing my voice a little bit this morning. As we light the first Advent candle, we are reminded that Jesus is the light of the world. 
We read this in John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Psalms 33, 20 also says, We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help. He is our help and our shield. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. As we light the first candle, the candle of hope, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace <coughs> as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the, Holy of the, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord, renew our senses of hope in your heart this morning. Let your word and your promises remind us of hope that our prayers will be answered. That doors of opportunity that seem closed will be opened. The broken relationships will be mended. The diseased bodies will be healed. And the damaged trust will be restored. We pray this in eager expectation of our coming Savior, Jesus Christ. And all of God's children said, Amen. 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 Go ahead and give Heather a hand up of praise for being uh, for you. Now let's stand together as we worship the Lord.
traditional praise and worship but we're glad that you've joined us today and we look forward to spending this season of the year celebrating and preparing for the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ let's continue to worship to us a son, a savior who will save his people from their sins. And Father, we're reminded that because of Jesus' birth that he was unable to provide the sacrifice for our forgiveness of sins. And so Father, as we kick off the Christmas season, the beginning of a new church calendar, starting with the birth of Jesus Christ, all the way through his death, burial, and resurrection, we are reminded that you loved us so much that you would send a solution to our sin problem with your son, Jesus Christ. So as we continue to worship you in a moment, Father, just be glorified for what you have done in our lives and in the lives of those who will come to know you and your son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior. We give you thanks for that in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we're going to receive our morning offering. If you're visiting with us, you received a packet of information, and inside that packet of information was a visitor's card. If you would fill that out, and at some point during the service, you can put it in one of the baskets here across the front, or there's two in the back. You can just place it there so we can have a record of your visit. For those of us that are here today, uh, this is an opportunity to worship God through our tithes and offerings. And you can do that at any point 
just come and bring those, place those in the baskets here uh, in the front or the two in the back, or you can use the Tithely app. You can scan that QR code that's on the screen and um, you can give electronically. Technology has given us lots of ways to give, so we're grateful for that. As you prepare for your offerings, let's continue to worship Him. you 
for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Sing that last part. Jesus Messiah. Tells us Emmanuel. Yes, my God, my God. God among us. Yes. And Father, so many were looking for a king to come riding in in majesty and glory. Nobody expected it to be a baby in a manger. And yet, Father, from the very beginning, we know that this child was anointed to be yes. the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So much so that so much so that 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 the, the king sent out a decree that all babies under a certain age would be killed yes, well, yes, well. but because you intervened and sent the family away to egypt father we know that we know that jesus survived that massacre and he not only survived that he thrived and the father as he grew he, the bible tells us that he grew in stature in wisdom and knowledge and Father, we know that he, even at a young age, was teaching those who were the teachers of the law. And Father, as he grew and as he began his ministry, we know that he did miraculous things, not for his own honor and glory, but to show your honor and glory, Father. Father, during this Christmas season, as we, as we think about that birth, that miraculous birth, Father, let us remember that he is the light of the world but that you've given us that task not to be the light but to reflect that light to share that good news with those around us father let us do that especially during christmas when hearts and minds often turn to the birth of christ let it let you use that help us to use that father as a as a tool to proclaim your good news to those who are so desperate for some good news today we thank you in advance for that. We worship you today, Father. We give you honor and glory. We sing hallelujah to you, just as the angels in heaven sing hallelujah in an endless amount, over and over again. Father, as they cry hallelujah, then you show another facet of who you are, and they all, all over again cry out hallelujah. Let us worship you with the words hallelujah today. We give you thanks for that in Jesus' name. Amen.
Father, we thank you that you have given us through songs like this a glimpse of heaven. And Father, even though our vision is flawed, your word says we see like through a, a glass darkly, but then we shall see you face to face. Father, we thank you that you have given us just a glimpse of heaven, just, just a taste of what it will be like when we get there. Father, in the meantime, between now and the time you call us home to be with you, let us be about the business of proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, not in a heavy-handed way so that people feel offended, but Father, showing how much you love us and how much you loved us that you sent your Son to die for us. Father, if they knew that, if they knew how much you loved us, they would want to know more about your Savior your Son and our Savior. Father, today, let us be about the business of sharing that good news in a world that is lost and on its way to hell. We'll give you the praise for the opportunities you give us to serve you and to tell about you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you will. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and tell him what your favorite thing is about Christmas. Jesus. Jesus. Now tell him what your real favorite thing is about Christmas. Pumpkin <laughs> <laughs> pot. <laughs> Lord, you the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. You know what my favorite thing is about Christmas, y'all? Is the way that he loves. It's the way that he loves. Because some of us are just so undeserving. And he loves us anyway. Amen. So today we're going to start a sermon series that I'm attempting to write for Christmas called The Arrival. And the first sermon in that series is called The Pregnancy. She wakes up early in the morning like any other young girl to begin her daily chores, which could consist of feeding goats or retrieving eggs from the chickens or going down to the local well to draw some water. She has no idea that her life is about to change and never ever will it be the same. This young girl whose father is named Jeho Jehokam and her mother is named Anne are raising her in a city named Galilee which was part of the ancient Roman Empire, and now was a part of the nation of Israel. Her loving parents loved God, and they dedicated her to the Lord our God at the tender age of three. Now this young girl, who we have become to know as Mary, <laughs> has reached her adolescent years and, and is engaged to a devoutly faithful man by the name of Joseph. This was common practice in the culture of the first century in which she lived. In the time of Jesus, there was three essential steps to marriage in the Jewish world. The engagement, the patrol, and the marriage itself. Now, the engagement, this could happen when the bride and the groom were very, very young, often arranged by their parents. The patrol, this made the previous engagement binding. And official, and during the time of the betrothal, the couple were known as husband and wife. A betrothal could only be broken by a divorce. Betrothal typically lasted a year. And the third phase was marriage. Marriage. This took place after the wedding, after the year of betrothal. Now, to most of us, Mary is often betrayed as a fully grown woman. But Mary was actually a young girl, a teenager, when she gave birth to Jesus. Most theologians and historians agree that Mary was around the age of 14 when she gave birth to Jesus. This young teenage girl said, yes, 
to the call of God with the purpose beyond what she ever could imagine. She didn't let her youth stop her from boldly moving forward into the plans God had for her life. In Mary's culture, watch this, her age wasn't a problem, but her unwed pregnancy was. This teenage girl showed a tremendous amount, an enormous amount of courage by accepting God's calling. So as we excavate our text this morning, let us keep in mind that when we're talking about Mary, we're talking about a child. Oh, are y'all hearing me this morning? A child who's vulnerable and, and self-conscious and probably have some insecurities like most teenage girls. Who's pure and innocent and probably very impressionable. <laughs> Sounds like to me, though, that's just the type of person that God can use for his glory. So turn with me to Luke chapter 1. Verses 26 through 38, when you get there, please stand for the reading of the word. Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 26. Boy, I tell you what, there's something about the whole sweet pastor and we got back to those pages. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Luke chapter, 20, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And this is the word of the Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favorite one, O favorite one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and you will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be? I am a virgin. And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called holy, the son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has been also conceived a son. And in the sixth month with her, who was called Mary. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am your servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. And the angel departed. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God. We ask that you just fall fresh among us today, Lord. High advance behind your cross, Lord. So that when my mouth open, it's you that's speaking and not me, O oh God. Decrease in you, God. Decrease in me, God, and increase in you so that transformation of the heart may take place. Now have your perfect way in this place, God. Father God, as we put our chairs up to your table and you begin to break the bread of life and feed us your flock, Father, we say thank you right now, God, for what you're going to do. Father, we give you glory for being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We give you praise, Father God, that you are our God and we are your people. In Jesus' name, and the church said amen. 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 Go ahead and give your king a hand clap of praise on the way down. Can you imagine what this young girl might have gone through in her own village? if folk would have found out that Joseph was not her baby daddy. Hmm. If he would have divorced her, which was his original intent, was to do it quietly until he had an encounter with Gabriel. Hmm. 
Not only that, but the amount of pressure that was already on her from this betrothal of an arranged marriage. This very young girl now all of a sudden finds herself with a child. Can you hear the whispers as she walked by? The convicting glances, the bold snickering of the people in her community as they looked upon this young, unwed, pregnant girl. The slander of her family name, the less than worth treatment that she might have received at the marketplace when she went to pick up her quotas. God knew exactly who she was. That's why he selected her. God knew what type of pain she would have to endure being the mother of Jesus. This frail and scared young girl who on the inside possessed an enormous amount of what I like to call quiet strength. God was prepping her for something great. The first thing I need you to see this morning is this. When God gives you a promise, he qualifies you to carry it. Are you hearing me? When God gives you a promise, he qualifies you to carry. The Lord knew all the suffering that would come upon Mary as her son would be labeled a wanted man. Hated by his own people. Hunted with a price on her head. God was prepping her for what was to come and that started in her community in Galilee. Because people can understand what was going on. All they would know is this girl is engaged to Joseph. But now she's pregnant. That sounds like, it looks like adultery. Oh, God was up to something. We should consider what a great trial this was for a godly young teenage girl, Mary, and her Joseph, her fiance. Her situation was stressful and humiliating, and as anyone probably could imagine. Nothing but the full consciousness of her own integrity and the strongest confidence in God could have supported her in such a trying time. Her reputation, her honor, and her life were at stake because the penalty for adultery was what? Absolutely. The Lord our God knows what's in each and every one of us because he puts it there. He knew what was in Mary just like he knows what's in you and what's in me because he put it there. So doesn't it make sense to let him use us according to the gift that he's placed in us, the promise that he laid upon us, the purpose that he has for us? <laughs> Look at the promises that God gave to Mary. He said, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. In his kingdom there will be no end. With the responsibility this heavy, there had to be something special about Mary for God to be able to trust her with his son. That's a big responsibility, y'all. Imagine, mom, if you knew that you was carrying the savior of the world. You knew the first five books of the Bible because that's what they had. So you knew the pain that was going to come towards him. Oh, come on, somebody. Just like Mary knew. She was a woman of the word. Mm. We know from the text that she had favor with God. We know that the Lord is with her and we know that she is blessed. Guess what? So are you. So are you. All of these things are true of the believer, y'all. We are highly favored as Mary was. Go with me to Ephesians. Chapter 1. Verse 6. To the praise of his glory which, with which he has blessed us in beloved. Mm, we're favored by God too, y'all. Now the King James may say a little bit different, but it's still the same. The Lord is with us and he's with us. We see this in Matthew 28, 20. He talks about how he will always be with us to the end of the age. 
We're blessed. We see that in Ephesians 1 again, verse 3. He says, Blessed be the God of the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So God is with us. We are blessed and we have favor. We just have to know it. We just have to believe it. And we just have to walk in it and take authority over it. Mary was full of grace. So is the believer, but Mary's grace was received. <laughs> grace because God blessed her to be the mother of Jesus. The fact that Mary was troubled at the same shows the humility in which she walked. Mary couldn't believe that the Lord our God has chosen her for such an incredible honor. She was in awe at the exact the, the extravagant words that Gabriel was speaking about her concerning her. Aren't we like that sometimes? Yeah. Have you ever thought to yourself, what a wonderful life that I get to live? I am so blessed that I get to live this life. Hmm. I can't believe I get to live this life. Or has God allowed you to do something that you know is far beyond your reach and the only way you were able to accomplish that thing is because, because of Jesus? Faithful. Blessed. He's with you. So make no mistake about it. Hmm. And we're talking about Mary, but the focus is always on Jesus. The Messiah, the anointed one, the one that the prophets foretold about. It's always about Jesus. We have one goal, and that is to point people to Jesus. Mary was the beginning of that. Yes, the promise was made to her. <laughs> but it was about Jesus. The second thing I need you to know is this. There's always a miracle in the promise. There's always a miracle in the promise. Yes, the promise was made to Mary, but the miracle was in the birth of Christ. The text said in verse 35, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Mary would become pregnant without having sexual relations with the man. Now watch this. This had to happen because it confirms Jesus' holiness derives from being conceived by the Holy Spirit. Even though he was 100% man, he did not inherit the sinful nature and the disposition of Adam like the rest of us did, therefore being purely and holy without sin. That is the only way that it could have happened. Oh, y'all hearing me today. It had to be through the Holy Spirit for him to be a man without sin. That is the only way that it could be. Because if it would have came through man, come on somebody, we've got that disposition of Adam. That sin nature that we're always talking about. Hmm. Hmm. You know, God, like with us, he will make good on his promise or allow us to benefit from his promise. We know that, sometimes we know that we didn't have the capacity or the understanding to accomplish anything, and God gives it to us anyway. That's the miracle. He did it anyway, and our response should always be to point people to Jesus. Not rob God of his glory. Right. Not say that, oh, I've done this, or I'm good. God gave you that ability. God gave you that talent. And every time you take a part and just take it on yourself, you're robbing him of what he's done. Because apart from God, we're nothing. We are nothing apart from God. But all things are possible with him. And it is because of him, y'all, that we have what we have, that we do what we do. Right. That we breathe what we breathe. Even life is because of him. Because the last time I checked in my Bible, it says that he blew right. in us. Come on, somebody. And we became. If it wasn't for God, we would still be ashes. Glory be to God. In the dirt. Let's not rob him of his glory. Give him his praise. 
See, the nexus, the nexus, the nexus of everything is Jesus. The text said he will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. No one has impacted, impacted history more than Jesus Christ. Is it not proven that he is great? Charles Spurgeon said this. Conquerors are great and he's the greatest of them. Deliverers are great and he's the greatest of them. Liberators are great and he's the greatest of them. Saviors are great and he's the greatest of them. He is the greatest of all. Jesus is great in his perfection of his nature. Jesus is great in the grandeur of his office. Jesus is great in the splendor of his achievement. Jesus is great in the number of those he rescues. Jesus is great in the estimation of his people. He is greatness personified. He is who he says he is. And he is all of that. And then some. Mary wasn't just carrying her son. She was carrying the son of God. The same Jesus, watch this, that we're walking around with inside of us. Come on, somebody. It's the same Jesus that we're carrying around every day. And we have to live a life that reflects who he is. He's in us. And anytime we do something outside of the character of Jesus that not reflects him, he might as well not went to the cross. Because he did all of that so we can be reconciled back to the Father. To be in God's graces. To walk upright with righteousness yeah. and honor and purity and holiness. And when we go against those things, what does that say about us? Mary was honored, blessed, but God knew she could handle it because he knew what he put in her. She knew, he knew that as Jesus would grow uh, in stature and mature, that it would take a strong woman to bear what was to happen to her son. To see him mocked and ridiculed and hated. To be wet. Hung on an old rugged cross. The suffering was great. In Mary's day, folk may not have to understood what was happening because of the events surrounding the miracle, but Mary knew exactly what Gabriel was talking about, especially when he started speaking from Isaiah 7, 14, when it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. He shall call his name Emmanuel. She knew because she was a young woman of the word of God. The promise was too heavy for folk to wrap their minds around God knew that it would be a trying time for Mary. See, people fear what they don't understand. And when fear shows up, the first thing they do is start putting their mouth on something in a negative way. Because they don't understand it. They wouldn't understand the pregnancy of Mary. So they would have slapped her name and called her an adulterer. And said she was this and said she was that because they didn't understand what God was doing. Are y'all hearing me today? There are going to be folk in your life that don't understand your walk. They don't understand what you're doing for the kingdom. They don't understand what God has spoken to your heart. They don't understand the position that he placed you in. And they're going to call you crazy. They're going to tell you, tap out. You've been doing it this long. You, 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 you must have just thrown a towel in because they can't see the blessing. They can't see the blessing. Because they're not you. <laughs> they're not where you were. Living what you lived. Doing what you was doing before Christ saved you and Christ saved you. And now you're brand new. Now your life don't look like the same. 
And they just see you as old stiff necked Christian that's just going to church. All. They don't know what God done for you. And when they don't know, they criticize, they judge, they put their mouth on you because of fear. I think this is part of the reason that he had the angel Gabriel tell her about Elizabeth. So that when things got unbearable, Mary would have a safe haven to go. Because see, sometimes you need a, you need a time out. <laughs> have you ever been there? When things just got a little crazy, you need a safe haven to go to. You need a time out. So imagine we're talking about a 14-year-old girl. All this adult pressure, come on somebody, that's resting her. And the angel Gabriel tells her about Elizabeth, and she said, oh, she will understand. Why? Because she was barren, and now she's not. Why? Because of God. Are y'all tracking with me? So he gave her someone, sometimes we need a ride or die. That we can connect with. Are you hearing me? That can get us through that thing. We all need someone that can ride with us when the road is a little rough. And God gave Mary Elizabeth, I believe so, to help her through when things got crazy. Keep in mind, this was a child who had no clue about being pregnant or being a mom, but isn't that just like God to put everything in place before you even know that you need it? <laughs> Somebody say he's great like that. The third thing I need you to see is this. And we're going to come to a close. God will send a covering for the promise. That's right. Hallelujah. God will send a covering for the promise. The Lord will always protect his promise or his word. See, the nurturing part to cover the promise. Uh, see, that was a sign to Elizabeth. Watch this. But the physical part to protect the promise, that was a sign to Joseph. To Joseph. See, this was more than an arranged marriage. This was a divine encounter by God. And he was supposed to change the world. And he needed two young, pure, willing participants to do it. Matthew 1. I'm going to tell you how. Matthew 1, verse 19. My God, my God. The Bible says, and her husband Joseph, being just a man, unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. We talked about that briefly earlier. See, he didn't want to make a spectacle out of her or himself to be embarrassed by folk who didn't have a clue of what was really going on. He didn't want to bring her any harm because the penalty for adultery, again, is death. This is why he wanted to take care of it quietly. He wanted to protect her honor, protect her dignity, the reputation of her family. And Joseph was pondering and praying about what to do. And the Lord gave him instructions in verse 20 and 20 through 22. <laughs> Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 through 22. The Bible says, but as he considered these things, he was praying and pondering. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear. Take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Then it says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophets. Now Joseph was from the bloodline of David, so I'm quite sure he had a deep knowledge of the word yeah. of the Lord because it was taught down through generations. Oh, come on, somebody. Back then, we got a good, we got a Bible. They had to remember it. They had to remember it. Verbatim. But God felt it necessary to give him an explanation because Joseph was going to play a big part in the woman of Jesus' life. 
See, when people refer to Joseph, you never hear them say, oh, that's Mary's boy. That's not what they say, is it? No, they said, that's Joseph's, the carpenter's son. The kind of man he was had an influence on the kind of man Jesus was as Jesus was growing up. God put all this in place from the beginning so that his people might be saved and reconciled to himself. Though the word, the word, the word, the word he gave us, through the word that he gave us in the blueprint of scripture, we seen the first advent. We did come, it did come, it did come, and it did occur. And we will see, and we've seen the signs based on the scripture, based on the blueprint. He said, out of the root of Jesse, the Savior will arise. We've seen it coming, y'all. And I talked last week about the second advent. But I, I coined it the second advent. The second coming of Jesus. He's coming back. But not as a lamb. No, as a warrior. To judge and wage war. Let's not overlook, though. Let's not overlook one of the most important things that we see in both of these passages. We see it with Mary in verse 38 when she says, Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. And we see it with Joseph in verse 24, Matthew 21, verse 24. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife. Can y'all see it? Y'all can see it, right? The common denominator in both of these passages of scriptures is their obedience. I came in today to tell you this morning, if God has given you a promise and you haven't seen it manifest yet, you just keep being obedient to what God said. You keep lining up your life like your promises around the corner. Don't you worry about what folk might be saying. The cheerleaders on the sideline always got something to shout about, but I am talking to the doers of the word. You just stay focused. And you stay obedient. Mm. God will send folk to help you birth your promise. Yeah. And he will send folk to help you protect it. Right. He did it for Mary. And he will do it for you. Yeah. Somebody say, won't he do it? Yeah. He will do it. If he said it, he will do it. This is why you got to know the difference between what God is saying to you and what your flesh is saying to you. So you can feed that thing that God said. Because if he said it, that settles it. He's going to protect it and he's going to deliver it. Jesus is coming back, y'all. Again, as a warrior to wage war and judgment. But also, watch this, to check on his investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, 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 you know, he made an investment. He made a sacrifice for you and for me. Yes, he did. So we can get back into the grace of God. What is Jesus going to see when he looks at your profit and loss sheet? Is he going to see crowns of joy profitable for the kingdom? Or is he going to see missed opportunity and excuses? What is he going to see? What is he going to see? When he looks at you. As we close, as we move closer to celebrating the birth of Christ, let us not forget what is our hope. Our hope is him. If we are to live, it's because of him. If we are to thrive, it is because of him. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. We celebrate hope. Our hope now lies in his second coming. Mm -hmm. And to that, y'all, I don't even say one word. Now, now. That means come, Lord Jesus. I hope y'all will see it today. May the Lord keep you. And may the Lord bless you as the song is coming. Lord, I come. I confess. Bow
we 